Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, on this video, we're going to uh, make up the inner tub fenders for the unibody here. So the plan is to um, have them as tall as possible so they sit just underneath this lip here in the center and they're gonna sit on this cross rail here and on that other one there. And same on both sides, obviously. So what I've done, I've got some sheet metal fab tools that I've been going to get for quite a while. I've got a magnetic pan brake, which is coming in very handy. Um, bead roller, English wheel, um, and a panel roller, and just a little uh, shrinker stretcher. So basically, like you can do it without all these tools, but I've been going to get these for a while so I can do bit more sheet metal fab work here. Um, gonna set them up in my little room in the corner over here. So probably the next week or so I'll um, clean all that out and set them up in there, have a little sheet metal fab room. Um, but what I've done already, um, my first attempt at a fender was a bit more of a squarish shape here. Um, that worked out okay, but I'm not really a huge fan of the actual shape. It's a little bit too squarish looking. So this morning I've just uh, whipped up a rounded fender and this one works really well. It seems to fit very nicely. So in this video I'll run through with you how I made this um, just with some very simple tools. Um, pretty much anybody could do it. It's not difficult. You just got to take your time and have a few patience. That's all. So anyway, we'll start on that now. So as with anything to do with sheet metal, it's a really good idea to make up a cardboard template. This is just some thin card that I've got here, but it's quite rigid, so it's ideal for making up templates. So I've measured inside the tub and I've come up with this shape. Um, and this will sit on the floor that I've fabricated here. And this top section here will sit just underneath that lip on the unibody. So it'll sit up like that. And we want to then make a, um, the rolled section which goes on top of it. Uh, we're going to make that around about, I think from memory, 11 inches wide. Um, so I'll show you how to um, cut out some 18 gauge sheet metal here, uh, cut it to the shape of the template, add a little bit extra on the top, then we can roll it over a form. So I'll show you that now. So here is the plywood form that I've made up. I've made it up to the shape of the template and what I've done, I've used a 12mm round over bit and just rounded over the edge here. Um, so therefore I'm going to cut a piece of sheet metal, uh, 18 gauge or 1mm, put it on top, uh, clamp a similar size piece on top which sits just short of the roll here, clamp it on top, then hammer the sheet metal over this edge here so we can get our ro nice um, rolled edge. So now it's time to cut out the sheet metal. So we just mark around the form first with a texture like so. Just remove that. And we want to now make another mark about 15 mil above there to allow it to roll over the edge of the form. So now we've got our cut line marked. Um, this will be the fold line here. This will fold over the 12mm radius. So I'm just to cut curves at the moment, I'm just using a Makita nibbler. It's okay for the job. I've got a, um, a hex, yeah, a little uh, jigsaw, sorry. Um, but that's too aggressive and it's pulling the sheet metal up and down. So I just need to get a pair of uh, powered, say, curved shears or something like that, possibly. But um, I'll go ahead and cut this now with the nibbler. So the next step now is to place my sheet metal 
over the top of the form that I've made and clamp it down with the other piece that I have as well. Okay, now that I've got the sheet metal clamped between the two pieces of plywood here, you can see I've got my form underneath that's got the round over on the top and the piece on top to sandwich it to stop anything moving. Just going to use a planishing hammer and just gently uh, just keep tapping this edge over until I get a really nice neat edge on it. As you can see, the metal is starting to uh, shape over the top of the form. I've just got to keep hammering it out and um, just any little pinch points here, just hammer them down, try and keep the hammering as consistent as possible and just keep going until I get it flat up against the form underneath. So I'll just keep going with that. I'll put you on a time lapse um, and we'll see how we go. And there we have it guys, there's the, um, the hammered piece. We've got a nice um, rounded edge on here. On this one here, I kind of didn't really line it up with the template that well and I had too much overhang on this side, but that doesn't matter. We're going to trim all this off around about, I don't know, about 10 mils off the edge and that's as far as we need that sticking out. So all those wavy bits will just be cut off. Uh, but apart from that, it's worked really well. The pieces stayed pretty flat as well actually so it's a pretty good technique it just takes time and just patience that's all but it's very easily done that's for sure so I've just marked my it's a bit hard to see it marked my trim line here where I'm gonna trim that edge off and then that should give us a nice nice finish I'll need to hammer and dolly a little bit of it probably but we'll get on to that now Okay, we've now got that lip ground off and cut off, all nice and even. So that's it from the from the outside. As you can see, it's a really nice rounded edge. So next up, uh, we're going to draw a pattern in here. You're going to do some decorative bead rolling in here. Um, but prior to doing that, we need to draw the pattern first and then uh, pre-stretch it on the um, English wheel. So I'll show you how we do that. So this is my pattern for the um, bead rolling. Um, just going to mimic what's on the um, driver side fender here. So now what we'll do, we'll take it over to the English wheel, just going to pre-stretch this in the opposite direction that we're bead rolling it, just so we don't get any distortion in the panel. As you can see here we've done a bit of pre-stretching in the English wheel um, you want to stretch it in the opposite way that you're going to bead roll it so I've got this going upwards and the bead rolling is going to press it down so hopefully that'll eliminate any distortion in the panel
so we've pretty much got our side piece finished bead roll the center section um, and got the lip inside all ground now it's time to actually cut the, um, the curved fender and we're going to tack weld that onto the edge here so here's my next piece cut out this is for the arched section uh, it's about a meter by um, 11 inches so we'll cut that out I like to do this here with um, seeing that I'm just cutting everything with a pair of handheld shears uh, use the straight edge from the sheet metal so that'll butt up against the um, the other piece that I've made uh, so I know that's dead straight okay I got my piece to be curved cut out here so now we'll take it over to the roller I've just done a few test runs just to get the right amount of curve so we'll put it through the roller and we'll just want to put a gentle curve on it and we can bend the rest of it by hand if we have to So I've got the outer piece rolled now, um, just a bit of a mock up here, we'll be able to tack weld it in the centre then just push it into place from there. So if this centre part's upside down we're just doing that just to get the right curve on it which we've now got. Um, so we'll start welding. So we've just got one tack weld in the centre, so we start off from there and just tack around each side and just holding it on the edge at the same time. I'm only using 0.6mm uh, MIG wire and just got on a very low heat setting So here we go guys, got it all um, spot welded up underneath, um, yeah I'm going to go ahead and fill all those little welds in, I've just spotted everything up just to mock it up and fit it. Now I've just trimmed off these corners here um, and then I'm going to bend a flange here so I can sit on those little cross supports. So I've notched it, um, this will bend around back here. And this piece here will sit down below where the frame is so I can spot weld this into the frame. Um, so now I'll just take it over to the pan brake and we'll just bend up those ends and then we're almost done. So you can see I've just put a bend in there and this will be a flange over the end that's the beauty of this pan brake you can actually bend past it so it comes in very handy for this purpose Well, here's the finished article um, these are those two little flanges that I just put on there on the ends if you can see them there um, and I'll show you where they fit in a minute um, I've just got some gaps here I've got to fill with weld but for all intents and purposes it's ready for a um, for a mock-up So there we have it guys, we've got both um, tubs fitted now, um, they fit really nicely. Um, you can see that last little bit that I was bending on the pan brake, that's a flange so that, that it can sit on that cross member there, uh, front and back, so I'll spot weld it onto there. <coughs> and the front section goes down past this square bar here, so I'll tack it from, from the inside in here, tack it through to there all the way along. So. They'll be fixed there really securely, so that should work really well. Um, but anyway, that about wraps up this episode. Thanks for watching. Um, 
all this I'm just learning as I go I haven't made my own inner tubs before I've always just uh, bought some uh, cut them up and modified them to suit but I've never built any from scratch so hopefully a few of you guys can see that um it's not that difficult uh, you just need a little bit of patience a um, couple of the right tools and that's about it anyway thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video cheers